Hello and welcome back to the Jake's Take with Jacob Elijah podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elijah, chief content producer and writer of jakestake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. I am thrilled to welcome this man that's to the right of me. He has over 29,000 Instagram followers. He has won over, he has won the, the New York Film Awards and European Cinematic of course, cinema, cinematography awards, and also he's a phenomenal actor and composer, and he has played Richard Montalard on Apple TV's Ted Lasso. Please help me welcome Stefan Manas. Hi everyone, hello Jacob. I hope you're okay. Hi everyone, thank you for taking time for listening to us. All righty, so Stefan, let's let's start with this question. So, when did you get interested in performing, and how did that passion evolve into the desire of pursuing a career in the entertainment industry? Hmm. Well, um, I fell in love with uh, cinema um, in, a, in, a gen- in a general term. Uh, when I saw Harry Potter, I really fell in love with the images, the story. I had the same age as the character, so I was very impressed by this type of new cinema when I was young. And when I was 16, I came from a very, very small town, and uh, they were looking for some extras uh, here and there for the background. And uh, I applied, I was 16, and uh, so they took me for that. And they offered me a, um, a real... A really character. Oh, some noise coming. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, that's background. That's background noise, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I don't worry. Yeah, I'm no. staying with my family at my family home, so this is the re- that's the reason why. So let's continue. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, so yeah, I had my first experience at 16. Uh, the familiar character for a couple of weeks uh, on this, on this uh, cinema project in France, and I really loved it. I loved... Uh, I wasn't skilled at all, for sure, but I loved the, the atmosphere on the set, how it was working to be an actor, uh, what it was to be with actor with production and, and all this environment. And then uh, yeah, I said, maybe it can be an option. And when I was 17, I moved to a big city in Lyon. I saw, yeah, many cinema schools, cinema theater school, and, and it was accessible, which I didn't know it was possible when you come from where I'm from. And so I said, okay, let's give it a try. And I really want, I really went, sorry, into it when I was 18. Awesome. So, what I what I've done my research on you uh, with all my guests is I found out you started your film career in Bollywood. So yep. why did you decide to b- go to India to begin the first chapter of your career? Mm, okay, I pushed your study till my uh, till master two in uh, in business and uh, in economy till my children is three years old. Okay, in Paris and in Westminster University, and just after graduated, um, I started to work in a. In a business center, uh, wearing a tie and a suit and everything, and after, just after two weeks, I said, "Okay, no way, no, I don't want to do that. I, I, I just want to try." I made the decision to quit everything and try to be an actor. And uh, I was living in Paris. I had absolutely no money. Uh, impossible to to survive in Paris or to go in London or even less to go in America. So yeah, I checked. I, I did my little research, and uh, actually, India was a quite good opportunity because of the price was very cheap. I could survive there. Um, the acting industry was quite, you know that, it's quite, it's quite big. And all the production movies is quite big too. So I said, okay, I can give it a try. Even the, sorry for the Bollywood market, the acting skill is not that great. And I didn't have any great skill at the time. Uh, I couldn't go into Hollywood and uh, try to, to compete with great actors or people who have done years of acting school. I haven't done that. I've done marketing and communication and, and uh, economics. So, yeah, so I tried India and I said, okay, I'm going to give in, I'm going to give myself three months. Actually, I said two years and I was ve- one of the very few European actors willing to live in Mumbai and, and India. Nothing disp- disrespectful to India, but it's very different. And actually, I loved it. It was very different and uh, I made a lot of friends there and uh, I didn't made anything huge or great, but I could survive easily, had many jobs, uh, learning more about acting, having a lot of free time so I could learn online what it was to to act, uh, developing acting skills, developing life experience because I had a lot of catch up to do compared to other artists. And so I said, okay, maybe if I catch up, catch up them on a different stuff like experience, life experience. It could be a good opportunity for me. So yeah, this is how I ended up in, um, in India for a couple of years and in Bollywood. So. And it's incredible because not just that, you not just were in India, but you also worked in different countries such as Japan and the Philippines. Yep. And what were some of the similarities uh, between working and living 
in Japan, Philippines, and India? Oh, uh, very easy. Absolutely none. <laughs> it's so different. <laughs> it's so different. Uh, yeah, India is 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 very different from Philippines, which is very different from Japan. Okay, maybe you can close them a little more. Uh, Japan and Philippines. Uh, I used to live only in Manila. I haven't. I didn't have time to go to go some some other places. Oh uh, yeah, and I went uh, then I went back to India and then I went straight to Jap- uh, to Tokyo. Ah uh, yeah, it's it's different. It's like uh, 100 degrees difference. It's like uh, day and night. Uh, yeah, Japan is very strict, very 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 strict on timing. Like a minute late is, is it's a disaster in India. You can have uh, two days late. It's, it's okay. So it's it's very different mentality and, and uh, very different experiences. Uh, in Japan, I've shot for six six days straight with almost only two three hours of sleep sleeping and and still they pay you for two weeks because the week after you have to catch up on your on the um all the the nights you missed or all the hours of sleeping so my english is not perfect yet uh so yeah, it's very different uh, in india it's it's very it's longer and uh, you take the time and and you can rest and if you're late it's not that it's not um that complicated to catch up with uh so yeah it's very different i don't really know how to express it, but uh, it's different kind of mentality, different kind of religion, different kind of uh, uh, business um, targets. So, yeah, uh, you have to try both. <laughs> all righty. All right. So basically, I definitely like you've definitely over you definitely were faced with a lot of different challenges. So what were some of the challenges that you faced throughout your career and how did you overcome those obstacles? Oh, uh well, I still haven't come over many obstacles. Uh, it's very hard. There is ups and downs, and uh, some of the down you, you can go down very low. So just have uh, yeah, it's usual stuff. You have to keep trying and trying, uh, keep progressing, try to keep doing your best. But the problem is sometimes you really think you're doing the best you can, and still it's not working. So maybe try different stuff. Maybe try different stuff in your life. Try yoga. Try uh, um, a different philosophy. Try uh, uh, meditation. Try to meet different people. Maybe some people you thought were great. It was it. They were toxic. And uh, yeah, you have to try. The more you try in, in, in the more different environment and the more different um, uh, axes. I don't know if I can say that. Uh, I think the more chance you will have. And don't stay if you're sure of something. And you stay very up to on it, and uh, and not open. And I'm sure this. I'm sure that. I'm sure. I'm sure of this. You're never sure. If if you were sure of the good, um, of the good way, everyone would succeed. Okay, you just go through various. But the good thing and the bad thing in this universe, in this in in our industry, there is no right and wrong. Uh, there's not one way to, su- to success. Not I'm not talking about success. At least to walk and survive and, and be happy. That's the point. Being happy, and uh, so yeah, just keep trying different stuff. Don't stay too uh, one way oriented. I think after six months, change, change, change. Even if you have the best idea, if if it's not working, we just change and don't stay on the same uh, environment for years. I know some people they haven't changed in three years and they're struggling. But you don't know. Maybe you're doing everything wrong. And if two persons are doing the exact same stuff, one of them can pop and the other not because we all need different perspective. Uh, so, yeah, that I think can be a good advice. Uh, don't give up. And, and if it's not working, try a different way. Try different stuff. Absolutely. We all need to try different stuff. Like, for example, I've been doing what with jakestake.com was originally a ring blog. And now I'm now expanding. It's been... To celebrate, I can't believe it's going to be 10 years next in 2021. But now I'm starting to do a lot more with video podcasting and also different stuff. So we all have to grow at different times. Good stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's talk about Ted Lasso. So when did you hear about this series and and why did it interest you? Oh, uh but uh, I heard about it uh, kind of one week before the shot start uh, for doing the casting. As uh, my my new agent, it was the first casting I ever had with this agent, my very first casting. So I was very happy. And you ask me uh, why I was interesting. How could I be not interesting with a, such a beautiful project as Ted Lasso, with the this amazing amazing production and this amazing cast and, and the story? I love to play comedy, and uh, it's about football. I love football too, so everything was just perfect. The characters nice, 
uh, they want me a French character to be in this Premier League and it's a very funny character. So, so yeah, everything was perfect for me. So I was really thrilled when, when I got the, the confirmation for the job and I just couldn't be happier. And the only way I could be happier is that uh, it, would, it's, it would be a success for the production, for Jason, for Brendan, for Brett, for, for all those people who made... I worked a lot on it, but some of them worked so much more in, in this project, so I'm very happy to succeed, and we're going to a season two. Congratulations on season two. This is an Jake's Take exclusive. <laughs> uh, well, it has been confirmed uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, nice. It's good. I'm so happy for you. And you get to play Richard Montalar once again. So can you, describe, can you describe the character to my audience? Oh, uh, the character is very simple. Uh, it's a story in a, a Premier League uh, soccer team. And uh, maybe you don't know, but in our soccer team here, there is people from all around the world. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, I don't know, there's Polish, French, uh, UK people, Argentina, Brazilian, uh, sometimes uh, from the United States, sometimes from Japan, from China. And uh, when you build a team, you have to pick very specific uh, people with very specific skills to build the team all together. And we all have to work together. But there is people with different ethnic, with different origin, with different languages. And uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, and so my character is uh, one of the only French, if not the only one, in the team. And... He's a very good player to be in the, in the Premier League, but he doesn't understand a word of English. His English is is, is uh, kind of problematic. So when Jason, the coach, is giving um, many orders or directions, uh, he always needs a translator. So he's, he's kind of lost. And uh, yeah, it's a funny character he creates to try a little spice here and there in the in the scene, in the comedy scene. And I think it's a very good idea. It's it's very American uh, and uh, in the in the comedy way. And uh, yeah, it's it's very smart uh, from uh, from Warners and uh, and in the Ted Lasso show. Awesome. So how is Richard Montalar similar or different to any characters in your past that you portrayed in the past? Well, I think it's French like me, so this is a similarity. Uh, <laughs> I love football like me, so it's another similarity. And um, yeah, uh, now I can say it. In the beginning of the show, the, the guy who's, there's some guys who are bullying, uh, bullying, sorry, uh, some of the players and a part of the, of the coach team. And I am laughing yellow. So yeah, this is a kind of my similarity as who I'm, who I am to. Uh, it takes me time to, to stand up and to say, no, that's enough. And in the in my character, it's kind of the same stuff. So he's watching, but he's not really enjoying what he's seeing. But he's not the coach, he's not the captain. And you can see in those episodes who are already released, uh, the captain may do his job and, and taking responsibility for, for the situation. But me, I'm witnessing it. I'm witnessing it. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, I don't really know what to do if I have to stand up, but it's not my job. So, so yeah, uh, my character... Um, they watch it and they, they create it. Uh, yeah, maybe for me, uh, when I applied for the job, it wasn't really for Richard Monglo. And maybe when, when they uh, when they saw me, they said, okay, maybe we can create a funny character for this guy. And yeah, if it's what they've done, I'm very happy and I send them again. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all a creation. I think the Apple production and, and one of Boss and all of them, and Duzer, uh, they create a lot on set and they see opportunities here and there on, on what can they do with different um, personalities, different people. And yeah, they were very fast and uh, very creative on, on the writing. So yeah. Awesome. So if my audience have, has not gone on to Apple television yet, the Apple TV app, and watched Ted Lasso, what can they expect from the show? Okay, um, it's really, it's 100% good time. Uh, Jason is, is, um, is just an amazing comedian, I think. I don't have to say that again. Uh, and he's really carrying the show. He's happier 100% of the time. Many people try just to, to putting down, putting down, putting down. And even if he doesn't know anything about the game, uh, which leads him to a lot of very funny situations. And uh, the entire world seems to be against him. And him is just happy and try to see the bright side, the bright side, the team spirit. He doesn't really care about the skills or, or strategies. It's just, how can I make those people be happy? How can I, I make them expect um, 
to give the best of, the, of, of, thems, oh, sorry, of themselves on the pitch. And that's all what it's about. It's about team spirit and happiness and no matter the rest and the results will follow. And uh, that's what he's trying to, uh, to show in the show. And uh, of course, it's kind of working. And uh, many people try to think different, differently and people who were opposed to him try to understand what he's bringing and he's bringing like kind of magic because when he is coming to, to the team AFC Richmond, everything is a disaster. Nothing is, the team is holding with a, with a very tiny stuff and uh, it's bringing a kind of energy and an attitude that we never seen in, uh, in football here. So yeah, it's very funny. Obviously it's, uh, it's kind of in, in, um, interesting in the, what is, how is touching people. And how simple it is, actually, uh, to touch people, just being kind and honest uh, 100% of the time. And uh, the characters are very funny. And, uh, yeah, that's it, pretty much. So you have to see it. And I don't see how you cannot enjoy it, except if you don't like don't like uh, laughing or, do, or doesn't like good script or good acting. I think it's very good. And, uh, yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, I've been part of the show. And now that I see the results, I'm even more happy. And congratulations on all, all that success, Stefan. Congratulations Thank on you. all that Thank success. You. Thank um, you so much. Yeah. So what my audience, you're all, in addition to your acting skills, you're also a music composer. So how do you get into composing music? <clears throat> Okay. Um, well, I started music very young. Um, my mom and my dad pushed me to it. I really didn't want to do that. Uh, I started clarinet when I was six. And after, well, now I enjoyed it. Uh, clarinet, and I moved to saxophone, to piano, to guitar. I played a lot of instruments. Uh, thanks God I, I had the time and the opportunity to do it. And uh, yeah, how did I came to composing? Um, I got a very good job in a, in a production as an actor. It was in 2016, I guess. And uh, two days before many weeks of shooting, uh, they canceled me and they said, okay, Stefan, we're going to go with somebody else. I was so unhappy and it was very difficult for me. So this job could have took me off um, a lot of problem actually. And I was very, very sad. And a couple of weeks later, the producer uh, invited me for, for lunch and all. Okay, what's up? So, no, I, so I, I wasn't very happy at all and uh, very sad. And he tried to redeem himself. Can I say that? Yes. Yeah, okay. He tried to redeem himself. And uh, so, uh, he, he felt a little bad and said, okay, I don't know what I can do. Uh, said, oh, you play music. Maybe you can try, you can compose some stuff, like simple music. Uh, 10 pieces, I don't know how to say that. Uh, simple stuff, I say, I, I don't know how to compose, I just have a piano home, I, I have no knowledge of, of this. Say, so, okay, give it a try whenever you have time. And one of my best friends living in Lyon, he was a composer on his free time, so I went to see him, he taught me how to do it, he was an amazing composer, and it was it's really it's really amazing when you put a headphone and you play on a keyboard and you can hear 100 instruments of a philharmonic playing all together. Well, it was outstanding how easy it is to compose compared to the ancient time with the notes and repetition that you just play and you adjust the notes on the computer. It's, it's, uh, it's like it's magical. You, I feel like a wizard. And so the, my very talented friend, uh, Quentin Thomas, we create a production art together. It's called Sound It. Sound dash it that FR, FR, sorry. And uh, we compose, uh, I think, 10 songs together very, very fast. And when I proposed them, uh, the producer said, everything's great. Everything's it's perfect. So he bought them all, and this is how we start for uh, to create our production. That's it. Oh, that's incredible because I remember one of the things that you were working on was a documentary for the yeah. Fast and Furious movies. That was the first uh, assets. Asset? No, uh, the first work I had to work on. Yeah, that must be incredible because that's a very iconic film franchise. Yes, and to have any part of the Fast and Furious movies. So what did it mean to be part of that legacy? Oh, uh, well, I think whichever it was, it was my first contract. So I have to, to make a, su a success out of it. So uh, anyway, yeah, I was happy. It was fast and furious, something very big. And uh, the documentary was a, a success on himself. And uh, yeah, um, so I think I, I composed like 25 music for that. They bought, they bought 20. And uh, luckily for me, it, it wasn't very hard. It was electronic mu music, EDM, dubstep, something very kind of easy to make a little of classical. It wasn't like jazz or, 
or something very different, uh, very difficult to be objective. So yeah, I was lucky it was something this big and this easy to make uh, for my first contract. So yeah, I was very happy that the clients were happy about it. And they took uh, most of my songs and it was yeah, amazing to see myself on TV other than uh, than me acting. It was my music on the on TV and on documentary. So yeah, it was, it was, I was very happy. All right, awesome. So let's, we got to wrap some of the interview up, but I have a couple of questions before we go. Um, one question is, what is your favorite social media platform? There's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and why do you like it, them so much? But I don't really like uh, social media, um, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I like Facebook uh, because it's, uh, I'm using it like a, like a kind of a LinkedIn, okay? Just to um, to talk with people uh, when I see casting and I can exchange and I remember the name and I have the face of the guy and I can remember everything I was talking about or the girl, of course, and uh, for casting, for direction and for stuff like this. So, yeah, it's very useful, but not for communication. Okay, I used to be a lot of uh, in Instagram. That's how I get uh, 30K followers. Now I'm not on it anymore. As much as before, it was in India. You know, in India, there are huge Instagram users. They all have Instagram. They're always on their phone. They have, they have two smartphones on their hand, graved on it, and always Instagram. So it goes very fast now. I think I lost a lot. But but anyway, I'm not using it that much because I, it's useful, sure. But I see how much electricity we're using on that, how much it can be destroying for young people, for teenagers, even for, for grown-up people like me when I... I scroll a little down and I see everybody has a wonderful life or not. If it can be fake or it's just the, I think it, it destroys more than it helps in, in a general way. So I try to be as disconnected as I am to, of my smartphone. Super useful connection, FaceTime. This is, is wonderful. We can have a, an interview this far away. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I'm not that a great fan of social media. But if you guys want to reach me, uh, Instagram and my Facebook page, uh, Stephen Manas, uh, I, I always be there. Alrighty, awesome. So if you had the opportunity to meet with actors who want to advance their careers in the entertainment industry, what advice would you share with them? Okay, uh, I think just like I said before, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not a superstar, of course not. I, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm allowed to give any advice, but um, an advice I would have loved to have when I was 18, it's going to be very hard. Uh, you know, you're going to be alone a lot. Uh, don't listen to everything people tell you, uh, except if it's, uh, if it's Leonardo DiCaprio telling you in person, if it's other people. Uh, you get many advice from people who haven't succeeded. Many advice of older people, 50 years old, when you check, yeah, they have an okay career, but it's not awesome. And, and everybody's different. So try to find your, your own way. Try to find what's good for you. Uh, think a lot, but not too much. Believe in karma. Believe in, uh, in, uh, in fate. Uh, always give the best you can give. Uh, don't make too much concession. When it's too much, it's too much. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with people. Not too much also, okay. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, when it's not working, just try different stuff. You, you try, you pay a platform. Uh, I don't know, Spotlight or whatever. Okay, this one is not working for me. This one can work. This agent, this agency, this contact. Move. Time goes damn fast, okay. Time is a bullet, okay. You don't have time to, it's come. It's coming fast. I started, I was 18, now I'm 28 already. Okay, so yeah. Be fast, be fast. Don't lose your time. When you make your picture, when you make your show real, Go on it. Send your mail, make rendezvous, make uh, appointments. Be fast, okay? Don't lose your time. All right. Great advice. Great advice. So where can my audience look for your work and where can they connect with you? Uh, Instagram. I think Instagram is the best platform right now. All right. So I just want to let you add to now for more information about all my stuff, including sample down to download episodes of the Jake's Take with Jacob Ali Show podcast. Head to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Spreaker. Just type in Jake's Take with Jacob Ali Show podcast, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R, and it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, and Spreaker. And also, want to connect with me on social media? Head to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And make sure you all follow me under, so just type in, Jacob Elishar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And also, if you want to see 
more articles, my thoughts on America's Got Talent, The Masked Singer, and other films, and also read more of my interviews and even my music reviews, head over to jakesake.com. Once again, jakes-take.com. Stefan, thank you so much for coming on. It's You're always welcome. a pleasure to see you. And thank you so much. And I wish, and I'm so happy for all your success. And I cannot wait for, to see season two. Of thank Africa. you so much, Jacob. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I hope everybody's fine. And I'll see you again. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, make sure, to t- make sure that if you have your take, head over to jakestake.com to compare. Bye.